we're not um, doing the Waterworks Park part of it, or is this you see this as a complete package in terms of your interest in Port Clinton? I see it as a complete package because my concern would be a developer that it's going to do it right, and by having uh, somebody involved in this, I know we can make it work, and just to do the buildings in the downtown without having a successful uh, development on the water, I'm, I'm just not interested in doing that because this is going to be the critical thing that's going to drive uh, the success of the downtown. It's a very critical part. And also by having a developer involved uh, that's in both areas, you have a consistency of a vision that ties everything together. And what, what happened, and this leads to the question about being the only game in town, what, what we have found in Worcester, when we started renovating our buildings in downtown Worcester, there were other people that came to us and said, hey, I like what you're doing, how do I go about doing this? And Bill Erdis, and you visited his hotel, the, um, the what's the name of the St. Paul Hotel. And, and Bill and I have done some buildings together because he said, how do I do this? And Bill was retired and he saw we were having a lot of fun doing this. He introduced him to David and to some of the contractors we worked with. I didn't see it as a threat or competition. And what has helped is now there's two of us that are doing positive things. And there's other people that are picking that up. So I'm not opposed to other developers coming in and, and uh, working and, and picking up buildings and doing buildings. But for us, until something happens on the, on the waterfront, I don't think anybody's going to buy any buildings in your downtown because what's going to drive it? We can make these buildings look great, but where are the people that are going to come and shop there? Where are the people? Why would anybody do that? So this is a critical part to make this work. I know we can do it. Maybe you'll get another guy that can come in and, and do it. But until it's done and it's proved that it's worked, we wouldn't be interested in coming and investing in any of the buildings. So I hope that answers the question. Well, that is, in fact, why the city has over the years been looking at trying to do something with that asset. Um, I guess my last question um, would is, is um, related to how you would make this concept year-round, um, because I think a lot of people here view fishing as seasonal and have wanted efforts to try to um, bring families rather than just fishermen. Um, and so I think there may be a concern that something that's completely centered on fishing might not be broad enough to attract people, um, especially year-round. You're ab you're absolutely right, and we have addressed that. I think we can. I think we figured out how we can get at least a solid nine months. And some of the other things, maybe to address some of the other activities that we will uh, expand into. Because I agree with you. Yeah, I think um, clearly we all understand it's not going to be as busy in middle of winter as it is in the summer. We know there's going to be a drop off there. Um, but trying to say is there is there ways to bridge that gap? We can go a little bit later. You know, fishing can start at a certain point. Fishing can end at a certain point. Those seasons can get a little longer. We can do ice fishing or um, hunting, uh, the other events are up here, bird watching, um, spa weekends, um, events through Christmas and holiday and New Year's, all those events. Um, you know, I think, I think that we can do a series of things up there that can bridge the gap where every single week might not be busy, but I think we can get, as Mike said, we've got nine months we feel like we're going to be solid on. Um, in the other three months, if we can do, do something every other week or every third week or something like that, we feel like we can fill and start to fill in those gaps too. But really for us, it's not just the building itself. The downtown is, 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 is right. It doesn't, people are gonna come here, not everybody's gonna come here is gonna be a fisherman. You know, someone might come with their family and it might be, the guy might be the only person fishing. We need enough other things to do for, for the children to be able to do, the wife to be able to do, shops and restaurants that, that do that too. So we, fishing is gonna be the focus, but everything else has to, has to come up together at the same time for it to be successful. Thank you very much. Why would you want another developer when you have me? <laughs> 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 I want to add, because we're really more than a developer. We don't see ourselves as a, we actually get involved in the community. We, each of the communities we have, we have an office, and we help develop events that create regional attention, not just fishing, but other events. For example, this last weekend, we introduced this 19 years ago. This was the 19th annual Winter Ice Festival in Medina, Ohio, and over 25,000 people came to Medina to view this. It's grown every year, and those are the kind of things, I'm not suggesting do an ice festival here, but there's other kinds of events that we will try to introduce and, and uh, get the community to, to embrace. So those are some of the other other things we other things we would bring to the table. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank uh, both you, Mr. Rose, and Mr. Krabs, for coming into our community and uh, presenting us with a vision on 
how you propose to help our community. Um, secondly, uh, my question involves, we were fortunate enough to be able to take a trip to Worcester and see uh, the renovations and the new properties that you were able to re uh, revitalize in that town. Um, what would you, would you recommend any other locations that you've been a part of that if there's people in our town who would like to go see some of the revitalizations and renovations that you've done, where else could they go outside of Worcester and um, particularly what have you done in Medina area? I believe that may be uh, a little easier for people to get to. So uh, any other locations outside of Worcester that people would be able to see is basically my question, sir. Uh, you're welcome to come to Medina anytime. We'll be happy to give a tour of Medina. Uh, now we've been involved in Orville for about five years. We're starting to see the uh, change in that downtown. We're just finishing a major renovation of close to 40,000 square foot feet right in the downtown. We do have a couple of examples in Orville that we could show people. Medina has the largest um, number of projects that we've been involved in because it's been over 20 years we've been in Medina and about 10 or 12 years in Worcester. So Medina certainly can come to Medina and be happy to show this latest project in Orville and a couple of the other things we've done in, in Orville. So either any of those communities would be happy to meet with any group that we'd like to see them. And, you know, I think the other important thing, as I've learned, is instead, is, and I think you did this when you came to Worcester, you spent time talking to other people in Worcester. Instead of asking me what I think of myself, you should ask the other people that I've been involved in. And, and so I think that they'll tell you what they think and, and what kind of impact you've been able to have. And I think that's, that says it all. Is there any other council members that have any other questions? We do. Hi, I'd just like to thank you for coming to Port Clinton. We really appreciate you, uh, you know, taking an interest in our town. We most of us love it here, and uh, so we'd like to see it, you know, improve. Um, my question is: We see a lot of businesses coming in and out of Port Clinton and having a hard time sustaining themselves. So I was just wondering um, what kind of role you guys would take in attracting new businesses. Um, into our area that you know would be able to be successful in our town. Do you go out and recruit, uh, you know, so we don't have, you know, five coffee shops come in, or do you, do you take any role kind of in that and diversifying like that? Well, I think, I think what what has happened, we've been able to uh, businesses that have been successful in Medina have gone to Worcester because we we've talked about Worcester and they've they've fit in. Um, I think because we would be developing buildings in the downtown, we would be very involved in leasing those buildings. Um, so we would play a role in trying to recruit businesses and bring businesses that would be compatible and, and, and work in the, in the community. And we certainly would do that. Sure, David. Yeah, one of the things that um, has been interesting is, and from our point of view, is we'll do a, we'll, We'll look at a property with Mike, we'll, we'll lay out kind of some things that could happen in there, how many square feet we could have, or how big some things can be, and what they could look like. And then in talking with Mike, he's got a ability to say, it would be neat if we got like a restaurant here, or a spa here, or a salon, or something like that. And it's uncanny how many times a salon goes there and a spa. It, it's pretty amazing that when, once you start looking for things that would that would might be um, uh, compatible or might build build other things around there. Like, you know, obviously a restaurant's a great thing. You got people, people come to a restaurant and, and they do that. Um, you know, salons can be the same thing. They can get somebody there during the day, which means that a coffee shop right next to it could could benefit from, from those things happening. So when the and when we're looking at things like you know what to go into here, it's not always saying we just need to lease the space. You know, we need a body in there. That's not necessarily the case. It means to, if it's the right one in there, it actually can benefit the one next to it and the one next to that. And um, you know, I'll speak for Mike because one of the things I've seen that it pretty impressed me on my end from watching it is how many times that ends up being the thing that ends up going in there is the thing that we're actually looking for. Um, and there's an active recruiting that goes along with that too because they'll say, oh, you know, would you be interested in coming here? But specific businesses that are successful in other areas that may have a track record too, some of those are great ones to start with. You know, if there's a restaurant we know that works someplace, it's got a you know, strong track record, great business owner, great manager, all that stuff. That's the kind of thing that would come into here. Plus, local, local businesses too. Not saying all that, but there are specific times when that that works spectacularly. Okay, members of the audience, please raise your hand. The mayor will walk around with the microphone and um, ask your questions. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, good evening. I'm Laura Slachter. Um, 
the president of the Portland Area Chamber and program manager for Main Street. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Is this okay? Um, um, first, I want to thank Mike and David and Neil for, for coming into Port Clinton. Is this right? Okay. Um, last summer, when Craig Trick um, came into the office and asked me if I knew who Michael Rose was, I said, man, I know that name, but I, I don't know who he is. And after racking my brain, I realized that he is this amazing developer that all of the Main Street managers brag about in Worcester and Orville and Medina. Um, we have quarterly trainings across the state, and at all of these meetings, the managers talk about updates going on in their community. And um, when the other managers found out that Mr. Rose was coming into Port Clinton to talk to us and coming here and presenting, I am on a list of people who are very jealous and um, wish that he could come into their community. So it's been an honor um, getting to go and visit the properties and the projects that you've worked in in Worcester and other communities. And I'm so excited to see so many people here this evening and I look forward to um, continuing to move forward with the revitalization of downtown. Thank you. Well, we, everyone wants to hear what you have to say. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the council and the mayor for realistically approaching this subject for the first time since I've been in, the, in uh, Fort Clinton. Uh, my question is, uh, I'm very familiar with Worcester and Medina having lived in those areas, and uh, <clears throat> I, I've seen what's happened there. And, my, and I'm wondering how has... What has been the effect there of things like having Rubbermaid and uh, what's the other one, Smuckers, and Medina being quite close to Cleveland, so there's a lot of economic, microeconomic <coughs> engine putting money into the economy. And what it has been the effect of that on your success there in those two places, and do you, what do you see comparable here that we could take advantage of in pursuing what you're talking about. Good question. Well, I think, I think one of the things that happens uh, when businesses are thinking of relocating somewhere, they really drive around the, the downtown, which is the heart of the community. And if it looks uh, run down, it doesn't look healthy, businesses aren't as interested in, in locating there. Uh, people don't want to visit there. Uh, you know, Disney World's very successful because it, it looks so good. but. Companies won't relocate if the downtown, the heart, doesn't look good. So I think those have played a, a major role in attracting other businesses. Every business will, owner will drive around the downtown, no matter how big the company, to see what it looks like. Everything else to add to that? Yeah, well, David, bring... Yeah, um, one of the things I'm looking at and saying in Worcester was when, when rubber made lost its presence in Worcester was what's going to happen to the city now. Is that going to be a big change in the city? Is things going to drop off? Are the demographics going to change or anything like that? And um, the downtown really just it, it just continues to go up at, a, at, a, at the same growth rate it's been going on now. So at first I think there was a plus of having Rubbermaid there because Rubbermaid did put some money in over time or tried to, you know, get in the communities. Um, but when Rubbermaid, Rubbermaid left, and that's been a while now, um, it didn't slow anything down at all because the infrastructure, the, the city structure was, was so solid. Um, there that they continued to grow at that point. So there's other people in the communities that will step up um, at different points, and there's business owners in the community that step up, and everybody wouldn't be here if people weren't committed to the community too. So it's all all that combined, all the local, all the smaller businesses, all those people that were going to do it. Um, and that was you said, and Rubbermaid not being there was was the first time example of it. But it didn't require that to be successful. Yeah, my name is Jim McKinney. Um, I, I own a property downtown, and, and I've been here for about 10 years, and part of the problem, as I see, has been the inability of the city to have code enforcement, zoning, things of that nature that I think have allowed these buildings to deteriorate very rapidly over a short period of time. Um, how do you address that, and how do you force these owners to step up and do the right thing for the properties to create the vision that you're giving us here? Um, we have no code enforcement. Um, again, we have no zoning, I think, that, that forces these guys to come up and do these types of things. How do you address that? I think it's a, a couple different parts. Is, is one is, um, you know, 
is in the in the in the architecture review boards that a lot of cities do have, and those are very strong pieces too because they do they do govern what people can do onto it. But the other aspect we got to look at is, is is also on the financial side of it too. So those can't you can't afford to do some things sometimes too, and all these other areas things that we're looking to do on to here that are that are developing CIC and, and developing things like that 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 give people. Um, avenues to be able to develop their property and say, okay, here's a low interest rate loan, here's 50% funding if you can if you can come up with some encouraging people to do that. Um, combined in with other projects around you that are doing things and say, boy, they, they you know they, they redid their storefront. It looks great. I'd like to do that too. So I think there's a momentum that can build on it. <coughs> you know, we have to start where we are right now. You know, there's nothing we can do about anything else that happened you know, in the past, but how can we go from here to there? And those are a couple of ways that we think we can, that they would be real successful. Mike, I uh, came to this wonderful community 40 years ago, and the uh, hot topic at that time was uh, downtown development. <laughs> and, and, and we have been talking you know, about it ever since. So if you get a handshake tomorrow, uh, what's, what's the timeline on all this stuff? You know, you've been talking about, I don't know how many years in Medina and how many years in Worcester. So you get a handshake tomorrow. Say, okay, Mike, we got a deal. What's the timeline? Well, I, I would realistically, uh, again, talking with David, but I, I think we could, we would start looking to, to acquire buildings in the downtown, and we would start immediately on, on developing the lodge component, um, the time we would get financing and get drawings. You're probably looking at maybe, again, it's difficult. You put a, a, a time out there, and it'll be 40 years later, and people are saying, why didn't you do this? But, but, I, but I, I realistically think it could happen in 24 months that you could start building that lodge, set, get the drawings, get all the approvals and things like that. I'd like to say it's faster, but I think that's realistically what it would, uh, would, would take, uh, the time you would, we would get started on it. So. Thank you. Else? Yeah, I was on a walleye festival for 10 years, and uh, it's always been an event ever since I was, well, for longer before that. And I was just wondering, they always said if they wouldn't do something with the Waterworks Park, that they would still have to make reservation or room to where they could hold their festivals there. Well, if we put all this stuff in the Waterworks Park, where would they hold their festivals that draw like 10,000 people or better a year in there? You have more than enough room with what we're proposing. And I'll give you an example. I mentioned the Ice Festival in Medina. There are over 25,000 people. That park that held that event is less, there's less room there than would be open for the facility that we're, uh, for the space that would be used for this lodge. There'd be plenty of, of open space. And we would encourage that. We would want more festivals. We'd want to expand on the Walleye Festival so we can get more than 10,000 people, draw from a bigger area. I'm Cheryl Coker. I have a loud enough voice, I think, with this. Um, thank you for coming. We're very happy. We seem perfect for our town. Um, but. I have a little bit of trouble with the um, fishing lodge part of it. I don't know how many women here want to go to a fishing lodge. I, I, I think, okay, I have a second thing. Just to throw this in, maybe you could stress family um, for our area. Uh, everybody goes to Putin Bay to play. They can stay, come here to stay. And, and stress family and restaurants, um, places in our town that you could have facilities that kids can play, uh, different storefronts, shopping. Men aren't going to go out shopping when they're up here fishing. Um, I, I guess that's a big part. I don't Am I wrong? <laughs> How many women? <laughs> okay, is that true? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, just, you don't have to stop with what you're thinking, just maybe, there's a lot of towns around here that families don't, people don't want to take their kids to put in bay, families. Uh, Sandusky is great for Kalahari, but they're not downtown. But Port Clinton has a shoreline that they can dinghy 
you know, up and down the river. They can dinghy out onto the lake. Uh, there's a water skiing. I mean, we've got tons that families would like. And, and we can close down our town at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock and make it quiet so that boaters can come in and sleep and, and just enjoy our... That, to me, that when I go to a town, that's what, you know, on the lake, that's what I want. I want to bring my grandkids. I want to go to the popcorn store. Um, you know, places downtown, but the fishermen aren't, aren't going to shop at a lot of the store. I'm, I'm losing, I'm getting nervous, I think. But I, I hope I made my point. I think we, we, we addressed that, that that's really a big part of it. If, it seems like we're stretching, stressing too much on the fishing. We want it to be family oriented. We want to be able to, uh, to make it more compatible, uh, just as you described. Yeah, to me, I'd say we totally, totally agree with what you say. Um, I think that they, there, there needs to be more than that. We just want to, we don't want to lose the fact that this is a gateway to the Great Lakes and the whole region right here. And it is still why people are here in the first place. And if we can capitalize on that and really and really do that, it should be able to do it better than any city all the way through here, through the region, because it has the lake. And that's what's going to make it different than being 10 miles south of here is because it is the lake. So we, we, we can't forget that as, as, as the focus of why people are in the first place. But we can do everything else around here. And that's why I said this should be a, a center point to go to, you know, go out and ride around the dinghy and go, go you know, um, you know, go get some little sunfishes and do some, say, you know, learn learn how to sail you know, when you're up here for the weekend. Um, you know, like when you go to, you, you've been to Lake Chautauqua, then you can sign up for classes and you can do things like that. It's a great week up there. It's, it's a cultural week. It's a, a lot of things to do as a family. Everybody has different things they're interested in, and this region already has all those things here um, for the families to do. If we can capitalize on the downtown um, revitalization and the shopping that all go along with that, that's a, that's a component of it, too. But we agree totally. And so if you overestimate that everybody's going to come up and go fish for 12 hours a day, that's not going to happen with the whole family, but there's, there's a lot of things to do here if we do that. You've uh, mentioned several projects that have been uh, uh, very successful. Have you been involved in any major product, projects that either were not successful or went bankrupt before being finished? And secondly, um, exactly how would you do, derive your profit from the entire project from beginning to end? What, what portions uh, will make it a success for you guys? We've never had a project that has not, that has not been successful. We've never gone bankrupt. We've never, uh, we couldn't continue to do the things we're doing if you're not successful. You know, you have, if you have a failure, you're not going to be able to attract investors. And when you, when you do projects, you need investors, or you're really limited to what you can do. Some projects, you make more money than you, it's almost like baseball. Sometimes you, you, uh, uh, you don't get on base every time, but, but we have not lost money on any project. Um, some projects you make more than others. As far as the, uh, the, so the projects have to be profitable. And how, how does that work? I mean, you watch your cost and you just make sure the numbers work. It's, you know, it just, that's the way it happens. Um, so I don't know if, I, if there's more I can, I can share with you about that. But, uh, but, but also, also, at this stage of, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm a little bit older uh, than <laughs> some of the younger developers. And I'm at a point in my life where I'm doing these things because I enjoy doing it. I enjoy making a place a better place than I find it. And I enjoy working with the people in a community. As you said, there's a lot of communities that would like to have us there, but it's, again, all these, as many people that have shown up, the concern, the, the good questions. This is why I like to get up in the morning, give me something to do. Uh, I'm not a fisherman. <laughs> so this is my passion. <laughs> so, anyway, that, that's, why, that's why I'm doing it, because I enjoy doing it. Well, Mr. Rose, uh, I, I just want to say thank you for believing in us, and now I hope that our community will believe in you, and two years from now we'll see dirt being turned and bricks being laid. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm going to walk over to the other side of the room. I've been kind of hanging out over this side. Hi. 
I'm June Douglas. Um, this sounds like a timeshare thing, okay, like the timeshare king that almost went bankrupt, okay, uh, that too when the market fell out. Um, that's what this kind of seems to me, okay. I personally believe that Waterworks Park should be a park and it shouldn't be anything other than a park and we should work on that. Um, I like your concepts of the buildings, you know, and how you change them. Um, I have a real problem with this coming in and hurting the charter businesses that are barely struggling today. And the little places that clean the fish. You know, these places are struggling right now. I just, I, I can't see this. I think this is a taking part of our view of the lake, okay, away from us, is, is just, I can't even think of the words to say. You know, I just, you know, because we've lost so much of it. We've got a beautiful area over here, but we don't need any more buildings. You know, I'm sorry, it's my opinion. All right, thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi. Uh, with the pavilion, we've got a very active arts council in the community. Is the pavilion just going to be strictly for you to use, or is it something that other organizations are going to be able to sponsor things on in the pavilion? Or is it is it owned by you? Is it owned by the city? What's we in would... your concept? We don't have a kind. Of, we we don't know who would own it. We have no problem who owns it, uh, whether we owned it or the city owned it. We want it open to the community. We want we welcome all kinds of civic and uh, uh, participation for art festivals. Uh, we've been a big sponsor of the art festivals in Medina I know. and in uh, in Worcester. We actually introduced and brought that idea for an arts and jazz festival now that's been going on probably eight or ten years and it's been it grows every year no we would support those things uh, we financially help support those things and again the more people we get involved the more organizations the better it is for all of us um, so thank you high school I love your I'm Zach Ball. I go to high school down here in Port Clinton, and I really love the, how you guys have proposed to make it more family. Putin Bay is always it has a bad reputation, and I really love how you're making it more of a family place for you know they can go to Putin Bay and party, but come here to. Have